Hello and welcome to Island Artcast, uncovering the creative industry with me, Olivia Savage, as your host. Here we talk about all things art and each week I'll be joined by inspiring Max creatives to discuss creative careers as well as burning topics in the art world today to keep that creative mind of yours in action. Hello, welcome to another episode of Island Artcast. It's been a little minute since we last recorded a show, but that's fine because we have been crazy busy here at the Arts Council and today is an Arts Council special. Um, I'm joined by my lovely colleagues, Martin Kane and Grania Sheard. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, Martin and Grania were part of the very first episode of the podcast where we introduced the show. So if you're not familiar with what they do within the arts team, go check out that first episode um, and you'll also find out what the rest of us do in the arts team. Because today we're not talking about that. Today we're discussing a topic that is to do with our lives outside of work. Because believe it or not, we're not just here for the nine to five. We are actually all creatives as well. So today's episode is about those super early stages of becoming a professional creative. And this can really apply to anything from being a freelance creative to a creative entrepreneur, working for a corporation within the creative industry and so on. And this includes everything from finding your creative style, your flair or your identity, however you want to word it, to how to network, what works best for you, to figuring out what it actually is you want to achieve in the industry and therefore where you fit in in this creative world. We are all in slightly different fields of creativity here. I mean, Grania and I are in a fairly similar one in that we're both in the visual arts and we're all sort of doing different things creatively outside of our day job. So hopefully together we can unpick these questions and maybe even give you all some advice along the way. So before we jump in, as this is an Arts Council special, let's talk briefly about how mental the last few months have been for us on the arts team. Um, Grant, you can tell us a bit about arts in the arcade and what's going on? Absolutely. So all summer we've been, um, we've had a program of free events in the arcade and this is from music con- concerts like sound bites every Friday lunchtime to evening concerts of brass bands and we've had um, a creative workshop, swing dancing workshop um, back in July and we've got a ukulele workshop that'll have been done by the time this episode goes out but they both sold out instantly all free to everyone but um we've had a great response so far yeah it's been really good hasn't it but at the same time martin have you had any sleep with the amount of extra work that we've had to no, do no 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 <laughs> and no. we've got to do this whole balance of doing work outside of work and then yeah. doing our creative stuff outside of that as well which yeah. is mad um, yeah, so I just uh, had one recently with uh, like Dark Horse Festival being on, um, and I managed in the space of two weeks to bundle a week's worth of uh, recording studio time with releasing a different album and rehearsing and things for Dark Horse plus day work as well. <laughs> so yeah, it's been pretty busy uh, yeah. the past uh, the past sort of month. Yeah, it's pretty mental, but we all manage it just fine, and we're here and we're still able to function. So that's good news. So let's jump into the episode. So to start with, I want you guys to sort of tell us a bit about your creative backgrounds, where it started, where you're at now. Um, so I actually started on the same sort of route that you guys started in, um, in that I'm uh, my train and I'm a, a graphic designer. I've always been sort of from the music side. I've always been like a music fan, but it's only really been in the past four or five years that I've kind of taken that on as more of a, um, like I could do it as a job or you know from a more sort of professional side of things um but yeah as far as the the design side goes as i say i've um worked in um for like lots of different companies um doing their kind of like corporate branding and things um as well as a lot of freelance work um doing things like gig posters um for bands on the island and uh, off the island before um and they're two sort of very different um very different traits that you need i think as a designer um, to go down so I know we kind of spoke in the office before and I'm sure we'll like speak about it in a bit um, about this idea of like developing your style as an artist or an illustrator mm. whatever but and then but then from the sort of corporate side you kind of don't have that luxury because they have a very They'll set style a and a very yeah. set brand and things that you do and so you can work in how you develop your own style in more of the sort of creative freelance side of 
um, of things. Uh, in my case, it was in like things like uh, gig posters and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So what you have to sort of find a balance between still being your own work, but then within a brief of what someone's given you. Can people be really specific sometimes in like the... Yeah, I mean, especially if, you know, if you go in to do a job for an existing company and they just want, I don't know, uh, they've got a new ad campaign that they want to do. Um, so they need you to do all the advertisement for that. But they already have a very specific brand. Mm. So uh, some of them can be as sort of freeing as these are the colours you use, here's the fonts to use, that's it, do whatever you want. Some of them uh, will have really strict guides. So they'll say things like, um, if you're going to put text here, it has to be this size and it has to be this far away from the edge of the page. Um, and so you have to kind of do your best with what is a very strict set of guidelines mm-hmm. and sort of make that as creative as possible. Um, and really, it's kind of only through time, I guess, that people will start hiring you in because of your style. So they might yeah. break from their brand sometimes to say, we actually like really like the style that you did on this, this, and this project. Do that for us. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But obviously it takes quite a bit of time to <laughs> get your that, name out there yeah. and your style and things. That so. must be like properly building a reputation for yeah. yourself and uh Grania, can you share a bit about what you do yep so i've got a bit of a mixed um background with vis- visual arts and textiles and um, before my arts council job i ran my own business as a crochet um teacher and um i made patterns and i did it all in the amigurumi style and um, so i've got quite a lot of knowledge behind um with crochet and i had a very distinct style that no one else was doing at the time and that's why i a lot of people approached me um i haven't really been doing that in the last few years instead since 2017 i've been a self-taught illustrator and um so I have uh, gone through the motions of finding my own style over the last four years when it comes to the world of illustration, which is a very oversaturated market. So it's very yeah. important to find your niche in mm-hmm. an industry like that. Mm-hmm. So the um, out of the last... Out of the last four years, three of them, I have been creating work for myself and very much focusing on what appeals to me on a journey to find my own style. But in this last year, I've taken on commissioned work and that's been a combination of people seeking me because of my style Mm -hmm. and wanting me to create something for them in my style. But I have to fit a brief Mm -hmm. as well with the, the company's values and things. Um, so it, it is a, a wide spectrum and um, yeah and I'm just glad that I'm at a point where people are recognizing that there is a style as yeah. well which is good yeah definitely so before we sort of jump into the to the proper nitty-gritty of it I wanted to get your guys opinion on what you actually think it means to say finding your style like if someone said to you what's your style like, how did you find it like how would you describe that to someone um, it's a very difficult one and I think um, the misconception, the main misconception is that um, people think that it's a destination that you arrive at, whereas really it's an ongoing journey over your entire creative life. Mm-hmm. Um, you may recognise some of your favourite artists as having styles, but they are constantly evolving all of the time. So it's it's not something that you need to arrive at in order to then start producing work for the public. Mm-hmm. Um there's just a few things that you need to consider is that keep keep consistent to, to a degree but flexible enough to, to experiment with lots of different things but um I think it's quite a um a, a sort of bad um misconception about it that people think that they need to have a style before they can start creating work and putting it out there mm-hmm. um so really you just need to keep producing work and keep experimenting and you'll find that consistent themes show up mm-hmm. in your work that you're constantly drawn to. And it's about being self-aware enough to notice that, oh, I keep coming back to that shape or that icon or that sound or that mm-hmm. colour maybe or that medium. Um, and you don't need to let it restrict you, but just notice that some of these things are appearing consistently in your work and they're indicators of your style. Mm-hmm. Well, this is the thing, like this is what... When you actually go into it and you explain like what a style is, people move away from actually referring to having a style at all. Like you'll go, well, my inspiration is so-and-so and and at the moment I'm working on this and that and, oh, I like these kind of things. So do you think you even have a style necessarily? Or do you think it's like, well, I'm just inspired by this and this is what is a result of it? Um, I think think that kind of goes hand in hand. The style is like an outcome of the inspiration. And I think even if you 
um, went into lots of different types, like over the space of five or ten years or whatever, you had lots of different inspirations. You kind of have this base um, build up that you, the stuff that you always, as Granny says, you keep going back to. And so that's your like basic, that's you uh, in a very sort of primordial form. And whether it is, you know, uh, in a, like a certain band or a certain illustrator or, or uh, a poet or whatever it might be. Um, there's a there's a comfortable side that you have, and then you build on top of that. So, mm-hmm. you know, in I can't tell, but you know, next year I might find the new greatest band I've ever heard in my life, yeah. and that'll just set me off to go right. I can write like an album's worth of music now because they've just set me off. But there'll always be a sort of core underground sound to that that's based in these these genres or these mu- um, things as well, because that's what like from a music side you're cul- comfortable writing in. Mm-hmm. Um, if I you're the most natural writing in and like, you know, in art forms, it might be what the pencils or acrylics or lino cuts or whatever, then that's what your go to thing is. So you start with that and then you build up on it. But yeah, I think um, it, it, it'll, de- you know, it always changes. Um, I think it's, it's kind of a bit of a shame if you do go through life and th- what you've just created today looks exactly the same as what you created 10 years ago. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, where have you come to? Like yeah. what's happened over those years? Yeah. As Gronya says, you know, it's a it's a complete development in yeah. in what you do, and um, and whether that is a new a new style or or it's something completely out of your cultural sp- sort of spectrum. Um, like I don't know, you might have seen a film, and all of a sudden, that's taken your work in a different direction. Mm-hmm. Then great, you know, that's it. But people will still be able to tell that that's that that's you. Mm-hmm. It's just that they'll see you started using a you know more red in your thing or more reverb on your song or something like that you know yeah. so um yeah i think it's it's growing right you know it's an ongoing an ongoing journey yeah and it's really interesting as well because obviously like i went through a slightly different journey to you guys in that i did uni and went mm-hmm. and studied directly fine art um as my degree so for a bit of background for listeners um outside of work for me i'm currently a printmaker and i'm doing lino cut prints but I've really only been doing that for about a year I mean I've been working in printmaking since I was like I don't know 15 or something but when you're in education I was never doing like one thing like Mm -hmm. I wouldn't just find one thing and be like okay this is what I'm doing for the next like year Mm -hmm. within one project I would have done so many different mediums and explored so many different things and like that's a good thing um in one sense because obviously it enabled me to try out lots of different stuff in that kind of setting but then at the same time when I came out of education because the point when you're in there is to be learning and experimenting and trying different stuff but then when I came out last year it kind of feels like I've started all over again because I've been like right not only do I no longer have access to any of this Mm -hmm. you know range of stuff I have to pick something for money's sake um but what was even my I'm like what was even my main thing like in uni I was a performance artist and now I've like completely moved away from that but you guys have had such a different journey because you started outside so how did you find like in your case crochet how did you find that to begin with um so I think I relied heavily on the fact that it was an obsession which meant that I was showing up regularly to do it now my illustration and my crochet have always have been hobbies they've well until I turned my crochet into a business but they started as hobbies um hobbies are very important and they usually start as obsessions um it's only over time that you may move away from it but but what I think happens to you um, and other people like you in the education setting is that y- you have a routine mm. that is instilled in you where every single year every single day you're thinking about or producing art which is more difficult to do if you're in your day job and you've got a hobby and I think um, that practice that the lessons you've learned from that helps you experiment and show up and you'll probably have breakthroughs in a much shorter time scale than someone who's doing it as a hobby because Mm -hmm. they have to split their time and they might not get chance this week but they might get chance five times next week Mm. and it's quite inconsistent um, so I think that's a major difference to know um, between the self-taught hobby route and the f- education route is yeah. that education um, instills a routine. And I think if you know the value of routine and try to instill that as much as you can into your spare time, you know, even if it's just do 20 minutes a day, mm-hmm. it has a lot of power. It has a lot of power to help you um 
try new things, show up even when you don't feel like it. Um, it can often make it feel like um, you'll get somewhere in a shorter space of time than if you're over a long, if you're doing it as a hobby, sometimes it can take years to find your voice mm-hmm. simply because of the hours that you're able to put into it. But um, I think there are a lot of lessons that can be said for showing up regularly yeah. every day. And as you said, you had access to lots of things at yeah. university that you don't now Um that's that's also a difficulty is um facilities <laughs> yeah for sure and also I think when you're doing it outside of the education setting I found in the last year like I feel like what I'm doing always needs to have purpose because yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah. especially if I want to start making money off this stuff mm. and it must be the same for you guys I'm like well I don't really want to wait like I've got one lino sheet left like I can't waste it kind of thing whereas yeah, yeah. at uni I'd always be like whatever I'll just try this like, go through this lino thing. like it's going <laughs> yeah literally yeah, yeah. like I always would <laughs> and now it's like you feel pressure to have yep. everything you do be like you can't really go through that super experimental stage so much yeah I mean you you know that's that's kind of one of the big differences between a hobby and a career in it you know mm-hmm. it's and it's easy to sort of blur the lines in you know a lot of people do in creative careers where they go ah, it's just a hobby isn't it you know but you haven't got that freedom anymore and you do have to go right yeah. let's get this down and your time your time at uni was the time that you had to develop all your skills and things so you can kind of hit the ground running so like when I finished like the visual comms course that I did and it was all in like graphic design and branding and things mm. I that was me then like I didn't go to uni because I've gone from job to job to job to job yeah um you know after then um in fact I was doing a big branding job whilst I was doing the course <laughs> as well so wow, yeah. um it was real like sort of learn on the job kind of thing but that's it and you know in like in music as well sometimes you know if I I might like get a gig to do a function gig and so someone will say on like m- Monday, we've got a gig on Saturday. Any chance if I send the set list through, can you learn it? And it's like learning two hours worth of music in a week when you've got day job and things mm-hmm. as well. So you might go home at night and think, oh, I'm so knackered. But yeah, as Granny says, you've got to get into that mindset and go, no, I need to sit down, at least spend an hour here mm-hmm. and just go through the first half of this set or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Well, you know? so- something I'd like to add to that. Um is that we all become creative people all of you listening and and us we all become creative people because we've got good taste and we know what it is that we want to be creating but the gap you're bet- picking yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> the gap between where you are there and where you want to be is skill and yeah. so if um it's really important to invest time in mm-hmm. in upping your skills it's for example martin with his grades yeah, yeah. and you with your university course and mm-hmm. i and i try and show up as much as possible to practice my illustration and i do online courses because that's what that skill will do is it'll help you communicate your ideas a lot easier mm-hmm. so you have already got a voice and you've already got a style um because you've got your taste already Mm. pulls it all together in what you know you like to see or hear Mm -hmm. or do um but you have to bridge the gap by making sure your skills um you're investing time in your skills so that you can communicate those ideas Mm -hmm. and represent yourself on a soundtrack on a page Mm -hmm. and as well like i feel like learning well i've definitely found in the last year um with doing like spending time to like invest into one medium and learning how to do it as a skill more ideas then come from learning that skill because if you've Mm. already got sort of that creative brain in action and you're like okay I'm going to spend time learning this the more that you learn about how to do something you start to figure out new techniques and therefore figure out new ideas to do with those techniques so it kind of comes out of you in this sort of yeah, like yeah, long-winded, yeah. well, not long-winded, but this sort of process. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, you know, there's a there's the session musicians all over the world have their specialities, mm. and so, like I spoke to some before that say, well, if they want this type of playing, I just don't do that, you know. Yeah. And yeah, they've lost the job, but they're gone. It's better off if someone else gets it who'll do the job properly than me trying yeah. to like ham fist my way through it. But you still keep up with, you know, you have a broad amount of skills. Uh, and styles of playing and things like that you know because eventually you'll lose out on all the jobs if you only, if you only play one specific type of music yeah, yeah. then you're not going to get very far you know mm-hmm. um but like picking those things up yeah that's that's you know that's a, a constant learning curve as well and it's like we were saying before right you never really define your one style because you have all these yeah. different things so i might play in um 
like a like a soul type you know genre and think i'm really comfortable in that well i know that i can sort of branch out into jazz a bit and then into funk a bit and all of a sudden you've got a bigger wider spectrum mm -hmm. um and yeah it's it's always it's always a learning curve yeah yeah. And so to take it back a bit, so we keep talking mm -hmm. about how this is sort of an ongoing journey of yeah. finding inspiration, learning new things. And I wanted to talk about inspiration, well, being inspired by versus copying, because I think okay. this is a really interesting topic, because obviously now in the 21st century, like with everything that happened in the 20th century, there's not really much new stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. Like you could argue that pretty much everything has been done already. And so no matter what you do, like your ideas aren't going to be pulled out of thin air. Like unless we made this huge revelation, and we were like the next Picasso. <laughs> Chances are like we've taken an idea from someone else. So how do you sort of say you're just in the research stage and you're browsing Instagram or Pinterest or Google or going to a gallery wherever you find inspiration? And how do you find that gap between going, I love what they've done. I want to do something like that and straight up copying. How do you mentally divide those? Um, so I've got a really good book recommendation here for this. Um, there's a person called Austin Cleon, who's a writer and um, artist, illustrator. And he's ha he has a book called Steal Like an Artist. Um, it's fantastic, very quick and easy to read. And it's about the difference between um, plagiarising and honouring mm -hmm. multiple influences to create something new, almost like a Frankenstein. Because really there are no new ideas under the sun. Um, and he's got a really great quote um, that's essentially to the tune of everything that ha needs to be said has already been said, mm -hmm. but not everyone was listening at the time. So it needs to be said again. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, um, that's something to keep in mind is that you can't really avoid having a completely original like idea. Yeah. Um, you just need to really study what it is that you like about all of your influences and cherry pick from mm -hmm. them to inform something new for yourself um so that's not looking at one uh, one artist and thinking i love what they do i want to have what they have you know yeah. that's not at all what this is about it's this is about looking at a hundred different people and thinking i like this i like this i like this and you're mm -hmm. naturally because you are the filter um for that it's all going to come through you and it's naturally going to be something else because it's been driven by your voice and your interpretation of that. Yeah, for sure. Martin, can you say what you said earlier in the office about if you hear a piece of music? Because I think that's such a good analogy for people who are thinking about like when they're looking at something and they're like, oh, I really like that. If you thought of a piece of music that you liked... Do you remember what you said? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you you like, explained it to me and I'll elaborate you were like, on it. <laughs> yeah, so this is my idea, really. Yeah. Um, if somewhat if you were thinking about a piece of music that you liked and you were a musician instead of going and listening to it just play it how oh right okay you yeah. remember it right and yeah, you yeah, will yeah. naturally like come out with your own you yeah. can take it away from it's a little part. bit okay yeah so that's the, so this is a friend of mine came up with this theory of a sort of musical chinese whispers thing where if he was struggling to write a new a guitar riff or so a guitar riff is his example you know and um so he'd think to himself what what do I want to go for here? Do I do I want this riff to sound like oh, Jimi Hendrix or whatever? And so he would try and play back a Jimi Hendrix riff in his head, mm -hmm. how he thinks it goes, mm -hmm. but with all like the nuances, and he's probably playing it in a different key, and he's not like bending the string at the right point and like holding a note for long enough and things. And before long, he's written an, his own riff in his style that sort of has. Uh, a sort of hark back to a Hendrix type thing yeah. um, so he's found that pretty foolproof so far <laughs> yeah I think it's just such it's an quite an interesting yeah like such an it. interesting concept to use because I definitely have those times like where you where I think like there are a number of artists that I can think of where I'm like I just want to make what you're making and in my head I'm mm -hmm. just like like I was saying this to you before man, where like you'll see something online and you'll see something that an artist has done or a style of like print in my case and I'll be like that's exactly what I want to do. And then I'm kind of sat there looking at it being like, well, that's it now. I can't do it. Like they've done it, but that's exactly what my head was trying to get to. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, how do you move on from that and yeah. make it your own still? Yeah. And it's a bit like, you know, it's like waking up after a dream and you never remember your dream exactly as it is. Mm -hmm. So if you had this, you know, you wanted to do something in the style of uh, an artist, whoever it might be. Um, and you think about their style you not you haven't got photographic memories you know you're not going to remember it exactly as it is but you can take like 
that feel or how that piece made you feel when you first saw it and then put the maybe the feeling into your work instead of going well stylistically and technical skill wise this is what they've done to get that far yeah you kind of have that and like um you know i suppose it comes down to like when people talk about influencers um you, sometimes you can see you know bands and you look at them and you go i know what they're going to sound like because mm-hmm. they've all dressed up like you know led zeppelin or whatever yeah. so they're definitely going to sound like led zeppelin there mm-hmm. but I think when people go down this route, they kind of forget that, like, your influences, it's a bit like your sort of creative personality a bit. Mm. And your personality, who is kind of you, it's not made up from one thing. It's made up of, like, how you were brought up and who your friends are and what's going on around you. And so just you being you is a mixture of a lot of different things. Mm. And so if you treat your kind of creative personality like that don't put all your eggs in one basket and go well we want to sound like led zeppelin so that's it that's all we're going to do it's like well look at all the other things that were going on a lot of like the led zeppelin and like black sabbath stuff it's about things that were going on at the time as well so take that sort of cue and go right well let's write about what this is and is that a nice story that's happened or is it a horrible thing Mm -hmm. so how would i make a horrible sound or a nice sound Mm -hmm. um and it's interesting as well um uh, like Grania said, you know, the, these things that are kind of truly, uh, you know, original, all those things in music, they've been unlistenable. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you've had proper, like, real groundbreaking stuff, like in the sort of, the, like, 70s ish, I'm probably going to get that decade wrong. Um, but there was a band, there's a UK band called Throb and Gristle. And so their stuff was like, you know, you've got to have a, a tuned ear to listen to that, you know? But the influences down the road mm-hmm. have made some massive bands in the past. And like in the 90s when Aphex Twin came out, and it just blew people's brains in two. But now it's kind of accepted stuff. So if you try and go for something completely original now, it's going to be, it's going to be unlistenable. Gonna it. yeah. you know? And it's the same, same sort of thing if you try and do a painting and it hasn't got any... Someone can look at it and go, I, I can't see what you're referencing there. Because people like references as well, you yeah, know? Yeah. And this is another thing where you have to balance up between your your artistic vision and your, like, professional vision. Your professional vision is you need to make money from what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And so if people don't have any reference or um, can't attach themselves to it somehow, they ain't going to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But I um, think it's really interesting what you're saying in terms of, like, you can't make something original... But at the same time, like in what you said about inspiration comes naturally from like your upbringing, your surroundings, yeah, yeah, totally. your friends, mm-hmm. like all these kind of relationships, like what you like to wear, what you watch on TV, like absolutely everything. And I think people can often think like, well, you know, I'm an artist, so my inspiration has to be like this list of artists and it has yeah. to be primarily within the art world. And that's actually how you're not going to be original. Like mm-hmm. your originality comes out and your niche, what makes you stand out, is actually you, like your personality yeah, within yeah. that and mm-hmm. all of your surroundings. Um, yeah. That's yeah. really interesting yeah. as well. I'm sort of glad that you said that because um, there's one kind of lesson I've learned since doing the, you know, doing like the, the session music stuff is, and I speak to friends who are way better session players than me off island and things. And they go, how come you got the job and they didn't, but they're a lot better mm. than you are as a musician? And you go, well, I'm better to get on with. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you can, your skill set and things can get to a certain point, but you've got to be approachable and you've got to have a nice personality and things yeah. about you. And that goes across all creative areas. Galleries won't get in touch with these for exhibitions on if they think that you're a complete pain and very devery and things yeah. to put, the you know, to do those things with. The film industry works like that. If film, you've yeah. shown yourself to be a reliable person on yeah. set, then you're going to get hired again. Yeah. yeah, you could be the greatest director of photography in the world, but if you turn up and you're not turning up on time, and you know all those mm-hmm. things mount up, they'll go. We'll we'll get the second best. Yeah. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. No, uh, I think that's really true about what you're saying about your story and your individual makeup. We we are all as humans like a magical concoction of um, our upbringing, Mm -hmm. our gender, our sexuality, our religion, our values, our communities, our countries, our language. We are Mm -hmm. all um, naturally unique people from from all of these influences coming in, as well as what you personally think is, is wonderful in the world. So already just that on its own, even if you're taking influence from various people, because you've got all of that informing your creative voice, it's naturally going to be original just by itself. Yeah, absolutely. And I think people spend a lot of time focusing on the 
what do we sound like or yeah. what do we you know what's our film genre going to be or you know whatever it's like, it is. is it creatively intelligent enough people often mm. get stuck on yeah 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 absolutely i mean i we just um i did a project recently um and we've just released the album on spotify as soon as you put it on things like spotify or apple uh like itunes um and things they go what genre are you and we were like, oh, actually, I don't know. We're mm-hmm. we're like David Lynch's wake up call, like alarm <laughs> call on his phone. That's what because we didn't really think about, didn't sort of too much think about like sounds and other bands and things. And there were there were things where it was like, okay, maybe like a bit of this sounds cool and a bit of this. But once you actually get into it and really into writing it, it was more like like what would it sound like to be a song on the radio in the cafe in Mulholland Drive or something you know and yeah. so you sort of think about that and then when someone comes to you and goes what genre are you go oh um right apparently we're like this this and this yeah. <laughs> you know sometimes it does like take someone else yeah it's like looking back you. on it yeah like sure. my mum's band the Malik band they're notorious for no one being able to say what genre they are they're mm. just yeah. their own thing their yeah. their voice is that strong that you kind of like I don't even know yeah. what yeah, yeah. to say this genre is yeah. <laughs> but I think this is such a good point and I actually think like I found that it's one of the hardest things I've had to actually learn is trusting your instinct in your own style because like as I was saying like at uni I would try all these different things and I'd be constantly searching for like a revelation like you find something you go this is it I've never done this before and this is obviously my style because it's given me that but like what I actually found and the reason that I started doing printmaking out of uni was completely accidental like I finished uni and I was like okay like I was just chilling like relaxing after having done all the work and then there was there was like an image in my phone and I looked at it and I was like I feel like this would make quite a cool lino print and I just went and did it it was I like gave it to my dad because it was like of a scene in his house like a little corner of the room that I just thought was really interesting <clears throat> and every and like me and my family were like this kind of looks quite hang on like yeah. this looks quite cool so I was like okay I try another one and I've literally, like, that's what the whole process has been, and I'm here now. Like, I'm still kind of in that stage of, like, I just did that because it looked... I didn't really know. Like, I just thought it looked really cool. Like, I just thought that would be a nice idea. And I'm kind of just riding with what's coming to my head at the time. Well, what you're stating there is a perfect example of chasing your curiosity Mm -hmm. and... um, feeling the fear and working through it anyway I don't know if you actually were worried about whether or not it would work but a lot of people have the blank page Mm. syndrome where they're worried that it will look rubbish it's that before you start isn't it yeah it's having that kind of childlike curiosity Mm -hmm. to just pursue it and think of it as an experiment and think well I don't know how this is going to look but it's an idea in my head and um I'll be more annoyed with myself if I don't try it and I see someone else has done it so um it you've chased your curiosity and that's Mm. a really big thing that I would advise people to do yeah and I think it's hard and this is what I mean like it's hard to start doing it because you're kind of in this mindset of thinking that you've you've got to find it and then you've got Mm -hmm. it but then what you actually realize is no it's actually do what what comes naturally like it's not necessarily at times it will be the easy option but actually it's just the natural option that works best for you yeah absolutely and you like you hear people being interviewed all the time and they say you know like what would you do if you weren't a musician or or an artist or you know an actor and they go i i don't know i'm still waiting to find like a proper job because yeah. they've sort of gone with what they think is right yeah and it's worked for them you know and so that's the um yeah i like that like chasing your curiosity is yeah. sort of keep keeping going on yeah. um until it doesn't work anymore mm-hmm. you know that's yeah. a difficult thing to come to terms with as well is when it stops working yeah and it's like okay is uh, is that it (laughs) yeah yeah well it's like that moment isn't it when you make something I mean god I must have this like every three three months like rolling where you are in this process like you're making something blah blah you get really into one thing that you're working on and then you finish it and you're like this is everything I ever think of (laughs) encompassed into one thing and then you're kind of sat there like that's it now it's done yeah. Yeah. that's it I've peaked like, where's my everything now yeah. <laughs> I think that's an important thing to note as well is never never let yourself stay in your comfort zone always like mm. edge out of your comfort zone because as yeah, soon yeah. as you like for a lot of people it, they may have found their style or think they found their style really early and then they they stay within that for a really long time and then they start to get bored almost mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. apathetic towards what they're doing and that's because they've stayed in their comfort zone and they need to sort of feel like a beginner almost again and it's terrifying but it yeah. will help yeah. it'll help to just edge out of yeah. that yeah. i wholly endorse like 
th- that out of your comfort zone. Do it out of your... Don't drop up. Yeah. Do the things that you're comfortable <gasps> with. But go... No, but like for, for like you... Uh, and like like to for you to go, right, no more illustration. I'm going to try and take that same creative process and mindset I had in illustration. I'm going to try and make a film. Yeah. Or like, uh, like a little short film or something. And I'm going to see the new hurdles and challenges that brings. And it will make you appreciate what the thing that you yeah. know about mm-hmm. a lot more and it'll give you ideas and it's all just experiences yeah, you know yeah, and that's yeah. that's all you can really build your different art from yeah. is mm-hmm. is experiences but yeah i mean the idea of you know um i mean it might be easier for me to say because i have a design background so i might go well uh okay I'll, I'll stop the the music i've got these things on so that's fine but actually then you've got your own time mm-hmm. where you think right what am i going to do here mm-hmm. so it's like right i'll pick up the you know i'll get a canvas and get some paints and let's try and do something there and yeah. that might dictate what then you end up something might sound like yeah later and on, it might know? work and it might be awful but yeah. i think the important thing is that you experimented yeah, yeah give it i think a go, we've yeah. got better as a culture it's still a long way to go but i think we have got better at embracing the idea that mm-hmm. failures are not a bad thing mm-hmm. anymore yeah, totally, yeah, um, it's like a lesson it, yeah mm-hmm. think anything is either a lesson or a blessing and mm-hmm. and mistakes are to be learned from yeah. and they are an essential part really every successful person you look up to has made a million mistakes to get to where they've got to it's just about whether you've got that growth mindset or not to, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. to persevere through well I, w- it. I was actually reading an article the other day um just on like buzzfeed but it was all um these singers who then go back and in interviews they're like like lady gaga was one and what did she, what song did she say it was i think said it was like born this way or something you can find this on buzzfeed but she was basically like i hate it like now mm-hmm. looking back i think it's an awful song like i don't know why people listen to it and lots of people then look back and they're like, actually i hate that piece but like it worked at the time mm-hmm. yeah 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 that, and that's part of your growth as well mm-hmm. you know you you are supposed to be able to look back and go oh that was that was a bit cringe really what yeah. i did there but that was me in that space of time mm-hmm. you yeah, know totally. and yeah. yeah there's like there's you know the songs i look back on that i've either written or been part of writing and you sort of think oh well i would really want to redo that yeah but yeah you just think well no just sign it off that that's you what then. you did yeah that was you then yeah. this is you now and you should always look at yourself like in the sort of in the future um yeah. and that thing about like breaking out as well um although it, it's good um like collaborate with people you wouldn't normally think about so a friend of mine's a writer and he sent me the first paragraph of his book recently and as soon as I read it, I was like, I can soundtrack that for you. Mm-hmm. I'll write you a little piece of music that's that scene. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, and yeah. so but that just sparks off new ideas in your own well, that's sort one of world. medium that you've turned into another. Yeah, yeah, yeah as totally. Well, yeah. You know. yeah, I mean, I remember when, like, when I was at college and, um, like, Ian Coulson had us do this uh, brilliant little exercise where he'd play some music and he'd go, draw the music. And of course, people are drawing you, yeah, drawing I think houses. He did that with us as well. He yeah. kept that one. <laughs> yeah, and he's like drawing houses and drawing, you know, car, whatever it might yeah. be. And he go, no, 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 draw the music. Don't draw things. Draw what your instinct is mm-hmm. to what you think that sounds like. And so you'd end up with all these abstract things. But you're like, oh, actually, that's just visualize what that yeah. song is. Don't draw, you know, what the song is about. Yeah, yeah. Draw the sound. <laughs> yeah. And it's such a good exercise. But mm-hmm. like, I'd almost wholly recommend doing that. In, in other art forms as well. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, give someone a drum kit and show them a picture, show them a Goya painting mm-hmm. and go, yeah. th- show me what yeah. that sounds like on that drum kit. <laughs> I think what, like what matters in all of this as well, I feel like we're talking about trying out a lot of things and how important it is to like yeah. trust your instinct, but also move yourself out of a comfort zone. And like, but I think what's also to worth mentioning is that all these things don't have to happen at once. Like I think no. patience is a hugely important thing in finding your style and continuing to find your style is that allow things to take time. Like if you're going to say, okay, I'm moving out of my comfort zone. Don't freak out if that then goes wrong. Cause I mm-hmm. think this is something that people can get caught up on again, like in the same sense, if you've got mind block and you just actually can't think of anything, that's also fine. Actually, maybe just take a break. Like don't yeah. do anything for a few days in terms of that like creative outlet and then return to it yeah. later on so yeah. I, I picked yeah. up my first guitar 23 years ago so you know it's like these things take a lot mm, of time yeah. and it is you know it's absolutely cool there'll be some nights when i do come in and go oh, do you know what? i'm knackered yeah. I'll, I'll do that tomorrow night yeah. but i'll just sit down and just watch telly or you know watch a film or something and that downtime 
is yeah, really important as well because you know the amount of like the amount of friends I've seen that have like blown themselves out because they think they have to be on it all the time mm-hmm. and it's so counterproductive to your um like your creativity and if you do end up like burning yourself out and like really just getting to the edge of your wits you won't do it you'll just stop altogether Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it can be 10 years down the line before you think maybe i'll pick that guitar up again and it's such a shame because for what could have been knock it on the head for a month and then you're good and you'll get that bite back again you know hide your hide your pencils away in the in the cupboard Mm -hmm. and just go out and i like it's great over here for that because you can just go out and have a walk exactly and you'll be in the the middle of of nowhere (laughs) yeah is is unreal and you can be in the middle of nowhere and see no one and just like take in like the landscape and go actually in the grand scheme of things there's a it's you know this is quite a small problem that (laughs) i've got um and having that balance as well to remember to push yourself and like i always think you know there's a lot of people who would love to do like the job I've just been given to do. So mm-hmm. whether it's, mm-hmm. you know, write stuff for an album or do a gig and I need to rehearse all those songs or whatever, there's loads of people who would love to do this and get paid for it. And so you sort of count yourself lucky a bit and that's your, your push. But at the same time, if you feel like it's really getting on top of you, just take a step back. Yeah. It's not the end of the world, you know. Yeah, it's- perspective <laughs> is a powerful thing. Um, yeah. But as well, we live in a very... Um, technology heavy world which is fantastic but it mm. means that we're overstimulated mm-hmm. um, and, and it's fast paced it it's fast paced and yeah. actually there's a lot of power in boredom mm. especially mm. for creativity um you need to be bored to let so- certain ideas come to the fore or go for a walk or meditate or do something in an entirely different medium mm-hmm. or just stare at a wall <laughs> yeah, or yeah. journal you know free writing um it's in these moments of boredom that or you know how many ideas happen in the shower because yeah, 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 you're yeah. not engaged you're not, you're not on your phone or anything yeah. but it's and it's because you're allowing your brain to go into that lucid f- yeah, yeah. state yeah. where yeah. you're not thinking about yeah. it or, i mean we've um, seen loads of projects in the office come about since lockdown mm-hmm. yeah and i'd almost encourage like once a year a month's lockdown where people yeah. just went no work no, you know, what, just stay in the house. You can go out for an hour yeah. a day for a walk or whatever. But, you know, because the amount of ideas that came out of people, like I wrote eight songs in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you know, yeah. it's ridiculous. But, um, yeah, that sort of, as you say, that power of like like the sort of lucid thinking and that blank canvas stuff mm. really is, yeah, it's so powerful. Yeah, for sure. And now um, just to wrap things up, mm-hmm. so what advice can you guys give in terms of finding your style freeing your mind up to allow it to think of new things and stuff what works for you that you'd recommend for the people um carry a journal everywhere (laughs) note down everything any idea you have don't think oh i'll remember that Mm -hmm. and uh, if you note it down and maybe it'll take five years before you ever come back to it but um keep a journal keep the journals once you've filled them they will be a gold mine of um, ideas that you'll have forgotten about that you can come back to. Okay. Yeah, um, m- mine's probably a little bit similar to Grania's. And um, like, as a musician, don't write songs off as being terrible. Like, don't get, listen to everything. Mm-hmm. Listen to Venga Boys. Listen to Miles Davis. Listen to Rachmaninoff, and just get as much in your head as you possibly can. And you will find this whole thing of like trying to create your own sound so um i have like my band post-war stories okay and so we've been going for nearly 10 years and but our big thing is that we combine like sort of like dub type rhythms with like psychedelia and like little bits of electronica in there and all of a sudden that's a sound where people go i don't don't know anyone else who sounds like that and it's because you've Mm. found these things, these that genres that work. Idea. Yeah, what yeah. you do with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so you, you take the best elements of these things mm. and make your own thing from it. And so you can't do that if you only ever listen to one. If you yeah. only ever listen to blues, all you're going to do is write blues music. And yeah. you're only going to ever sound like or Eric Clapton or whoever it is. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. Um, listen to everything. And if yeah. you end up writing, like it's like Beethoven symphony mixed with drum and bass, 
fantastic. Yeah. You've just got yourself something that people are going to listen to because they don't, they don't hear it. I'm going to have to write that now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Drum and bass symphony is, um, yeah, just, yeah, like, and once you think that you're, again, what if you think you're burnt out and you think you've listened to every song there is, go and watch a load of films that you've never watched before. Mm-hmm. Go and read, a, if you've heard of an author, and you thought, I've, I've always heard the name, but I don't know what they do. Just go and buy one of the books. Mm-hmm. See what all the big hype is about. And you'll open new avenues and things to yourself. And that'll, it's only only a good thing. Yeah, yeah for sure. Bonus tip. Ooh, bonus. <laughs> a, uh, from a YouTuber. Um, and this really helped me um, with my illustration. YouTuber is called Franard. Um, she said, now it, it can be a bit boring and exhausting, but if you are really unsure on h- how to get unstuck, it was to get all of your influences on like a Pinterest board or whatever. This is if it's visual arts and really analyze and note take mm-hmm. on why is it that you like that shape, that color palette, mm-hmm. the way they did their arms, the the way that they're moving in the image. Like, don't just say, oh, because I like it. Really analyze why, what's the feelings that it's yep. bringing up up and use that as a jumping off point Mm -hmm. definitely and I think my advice would be obviously I was also going to say write everything down I think we can't stress that enough it's so important even if it's a really small idea um and if you're like out and you're like on the bus and you've passed something and you just go oh my god like someone's wearing something and you go oh my gosh like that's write it down on your phone on a piece of paper whatever but also what really helps me personally is talking to other people I mean it's one of the reasons why I started up this podcast Mm. is because Mm. I really like talking through ideas and talking about creativity and stimulating that side of your mind verbally and talk to all kinds of different people like I I mean I talk to my mum all the time because we're quite we're quite like-minded in how we approach art and stuff and we'll talk through any and all ideas but then I also talk to other artists that like friends family who work in completely different mediums Mm -hmm. so when I talk through an idea to them like they've got such new ideas to like bring back to me and then you can like bounce off each other do like like you meet with your is it your drawing group and you guys talk through different stuff and I just think like like tell people you don't like what they're doing like that is also fine like accept bad criticism accept people who are like I don't like that and you go great why like what is it that do you actually not like it do you think I've like yeah. what is your opinion on what I've done and take on board all of that and keep that mind sort of ticking along by talking things through. I think they, I think the worst thing that can happen to you as a creative person is if you elicit no reaction. Mm-hmm. People feel oh, yeah, neutral yeah, and apathetic. Thing you could ever, yeah. Yeah. If they hate it or if they love it, you have right. created an emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Sure. And um, the, uh, like, if you've got, you know, if you've got a pub full of musicians, the chances are they're not all talking about music with each other because like you do, you do that mm-hmm. and so you'll be talking about all other things you know and it's those once you get comfortable enough with your playing and your sound and things you'll start finding that everything else is more important than what things sound like so as you know i think we, we've said about it a, a few times here already but it's all about the feelings that things bring on that's yeah. your influence yeah um but yeah, I definitely like talking to you know other artists and yeah, if you're mediums, if you're an artist, well. go and come and like have a night out with some musicians and you don't talk about music or art. You're talking about the things in between yeah. that influences us all. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, my favorite thing is like when you're talking to someone. Like if I went like to you for example, and I said, "Well, I've got this idea," and then you can almost like see a light bulb sometimes yeah, yeah. come on in someone's head, and they go what you could do and that is like my favorite moment <laughs> yeah, yeah. when someone yes. you can see it happening and then you're like this is why yeah. you talk things through because yep. you get different perspectives exactly i think we'll wrap things up there for today uh, but thank you both so much for coming on and doing um the arts council special episode i hope that we've provided some sort of insight or at least like calms people's nerves about the pressures of finding your own style finding inspiration and mm-hmm. trying to fit in somewhere in the in the creative world and just know that we're all on the same journey and if you're stuck find support because there's always someone else who's in the same position yeah can we right. say where to follow can we do oh yeah we... yeah yeah you, you yeah so <laughs> if you want to see my illustrations you can find me on instagram um i'm mountains and moons martin there we go. Um, I, you can have a listen on uh, Spotify um, for an album I just released um, called Most Nights Lately uh, by a group called Rain. 
Great. And I'm on Instagram as Olivia Savage Artwork. Um, you can also probably find information about all three of us through Arts Council pages. So search Isle of Man Arts Council on all social medias and iomarts.com and you can find out about what the Arts Council does and you can find us as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Olivia. Thanks.